Hey, how's it going? I'm Derek Kirk of Effectatron, and today I'm gonna to show you how to quickly add ambient occlusion to your scene in a Redshift render. So one thing that Cinema 4D's shader has that Redshift doesn't have is this really cool feature in the standard shader or the physical shader. We go down here, we go to Effect, and we say Ambient Occlusion. And boom, we get to control it right there. We've got some settings, and it instantly adds that to your render. I was like, that's awesome. I want that for Redshift. So I look for it here. It's not there. Okay, well maybe it's somewhere else. We'll open up the shader graph. We'll type in AO. Awesome. We'll plug that in. Okay, okay where do I plug this in? Uh, I don't know. I tried making it uh, the diffuse. I tried uh, making its own material and using a material blender. I tried mixing it with the color layer with the material and setting it to a blend mode of add. I tried all these things. None of it worked and I was really overthinking it and I finally figured out how to do it. It's ridiculously simple. I felt stupid afterwards, but here's how you do it. Real quick, I have some very exciting news. I now have a discount code that you can use on Tool Farm. Tool Farm is a very awesome site. It's where I get red, where I bought Redshift. They have sales all the time. Uh, the cool thing about my code, which is in the description below, is that it actually works on top of sales and everything they've told me. So it also the best part about it is if you decide you want to buy Redshift or Cinema 4D or some packs or whatever, anything. Look at all these things that it has. It's got Grayscale Gorilla stuff, Maxon stuff, uh, X Particle stuff, Video Copilot stuff. Very awesome software all over the place. A lot of cool plugins and things. Really awesome. If you use my code, you will get five percent off on anything in the store, and it will also help. Uh, you know, me, help me out. Give me a little Skrilla. So that would be fantastic. If you do buy something, uh, please use that code. It's in the description below. All right, let's get back to it. Okay, so here we are inside of Cinema 4D. We've got our asset here. It's a free download from Quixel. It's a really cool uh, rock. Very cool. It's a high poly model, so it has a lot of detail and stuff within that. You can see if we look at our hidden lines here, that's so dense that you can't hardly see the lines but oh gosh it's very high poly which is cool because that's going to give us a lot of stuff for our ambient occlusion to work with okay so let's take a look at this so this is our scene this is our texture we've got the displacement going into the displacement map the uh, albedo into the diffuse roughness the bump map into a bump mixer and then so there we go so we've got our scene right now if we hit render on this we get this really nice looking rock formation so it's like concrete with rebarb and stuff sticking out you can see we've got really nice detail the textures are 8k so this is looking really good but there's something about it that's just a little too washed out something that ambient occlusion could really add to the scene and this right in here we've got global illumination on so we've got light bouncing around but something about where this hits the ground there's a little bit there but inside some of these crevices and stuff there's a little bit I just feel like you could add a little more detail if you're going to add a little bit more contrast to this. So I just want to add some ambient occlusion to this. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull up our little picture viewer thing here. And it disappears for a second, but you just got to scroll wheel and it'll show back up. We're going to hit this plus button here to take a snapshot. Okay, that's important. We're going to minimize that. And we're going to go in here and we're going to go to AO, ambient occlusion. And we're going to grab that, pull it in. And here's how you do it. You add ambient occlusion to your scene. You grab the output of the ambient occlusion, you take it up to the redshift material, you go down to overall, overall, color. Boom. That's it. So then we're going to up our sample so it's pretty clean and you can adjust the spread and stuff on this. So we'll take a look at that right now. So let's hit this. We'll bring our window back up. Oh, we minimized it. Bring our window back up. We're going to open up our render region. And you can see here, we're going to take a look at this little area here. And so this has the ambient occlusion on it. And so you can see, it just really takes those little spots where it would be hard for light to get in and just kind of add those shadows to it. We'll look at here. There we go. So you can see we're just adding that ambient occlusion to our scene. Very, very nice. And so you can see what we're doing here. So if we take a look at this and we, you know, shrink this window down. So let's go ahead and mess with the settings of this. So the samples, it's just going to make that cleaner. Uh, the less samples, the more like scattered look it is. It's just kind of nicer to have that pumped up to like 256 or 128, something like that. You can adjust the color of it if you want. 
Uh, we could do purple if, if that was going to give us a cool output. You know, now we've got this cool purple rock, which almost looks like you kind of have a purple glow from it. So that'd be kind of cool to throw in there and make some, some neat shapes. Uh, naturally, you're probably going to want to do something that's like just got the tiniest hint of blue in it. If you want it to be kind of a natural daylight shadow look. Maybe just a touch more. Yeah, so really nice. And then you can adjust the spread. Point 0.1 is a really tight spread too far, you can see. Uh, if you do like a 5, that's going to really spread out. It's going to add a bunch of shadow all across. So we can say like point, uh, 0.25. Nice and tight. And the fall off is the same kind of thing. Uh, how tight of it it is, whether you know it falls off really quick or if it needs to like really fall off over a long period of time and really affect that. So we're going to say a fall off of 5 and spread of 0.25. We're going to adjust the max distance, which all three of these feel like they're doing the same thing, but they affect it in a different way. How specifically they do, I'm honestly not sure I understand exactly what these are doing. Uh, but you can just take this back down to 0. And there we go. Now you've got a nice, harsh little ambient occlusion. You can turn reflective on uh, if you want. You would need it for this scene. Um, invert normals, occlusion in alpha. All these things have a lot of uses, but basically if we just want to add those sharp shadows to your scene, uh, something in the daylight or something like this, all you gotta do is plug that in to the overall and then up the samples. Maybe adjust your dark, you don't even have to. Adjust the spread and the fall off and you'll be in, in good shape. So we'll go ahead and we'll take the render region off and just render that out. So after rendering that out, we're gonna hit this take snapshot again. And we're gonna go down here and click this first snapshot, say set A, click the second one, set B. And this can provide us with this little tool that Redshift has. So we can see if this is set A, <coughs> uh, sorry, set B, which is without ambient occlusion. And we can swipe over and reveal what that ambient occlusion is doing. You can tell, especially over here, you just really get those nice this just kind of looks more realistic. It's like, well, this is nice. But it's so well lit. It's kind of flat. And this kind of just adds a little extra bit of dynamics to it. It just looks a little sharper. It's kind of like popping the contrast on the object. and just kind of helps it look a little more natural, in my opinion. So you can, you know, swipe this thing. You can actually uh, rotate it, which is kind of fun. Grab this guy. Rotate it around so you can see what parts do what. And you can grab this little awkward slider here. And this will actually adjust the amount of the side to the right of it or to this side of it so you can say okay so you can reveal it that way if you want to without with pretty cool a uh, very cool little way to do it uh, i'll show you a couple other examples of just how it looks but there you go super basic easy to do it plug it in to the overall color okay so here's a little shape i made from a platonic and i've applied a white material on there in this white material we have an rs going RSAO on here. We're going to route the samples, leave the spread and stuff at default, and we're just going to take a look at what this looks like. So you see, as we take a look at this, we've got this really sharp shadows in there, and if we go in here to our material and we undo that, we'll see the effects when it doesn't have that. You've still got this nice look because of the GI of Redshift and the way we've lit our scene, but you don't quite have that, that sharpness. Now this does look really nice, but when we add this in here, we can adjust it a little bit. Boop. And we'll go ahead and take the spread down like 0.2. Yeah, and just really emphasize that these are really dark in there, you know, it's kind of cool. And again, you can adjust the color so you can add a little bit if you want lighten those up but just kind of add that little extra contrast to it without messing with it so there you go thanks for watching hopefully you now you can add a little bit of that extra punch in those nooks and crannies with those shadows without having to go into a third-party software to composite that stuff in there you can just do it right from the get-go so hopefully that works for you and your workflow um, let me know uh, any other suggestions for future tutorials and quick tips i love doing them also i've got three skillshare classes you need to check out introduction to redshift 
uh, how to create 50 medals, over 50 medals actually, in Redshift, which is a super in-depth deep dive into the Redshift material maker. There's a whole lot of stuff there. And then also, lastly, my newest one is a create a retro style sunset loop. It's kind of got an 80s uh, arcade synthwave vibe, like a DJ VJ loop kind of thing, which I just love and I just had to create. So I'll show you my techniques on how to go about doing that and using Redshift to create this cool wet road and all these uh, arcade style lines and stuff like that. Uh, so there you go. Be sure to drop a like and subscribe and ring that bell uh, if you want more content. I and mean, just be sure to comment below and you know, just let me know what, what else you want to see uh, Redshift wise. I do have a new, uh, or Cinema 4D wise, I do have a new class coming out soon. I'm in the process of working on it. It's not Redshift specific. It is going to be a Cinema 4D based class that has something to do with a feature that is pretty awesome. And uh, some of my videos go in depth about it. So if you can figure out what that's going to be, that's going to be exciting. I'm really looking forward to it. Stay posted to make sure you find out when that comes out. See you next time.